next question is from theory um, regarding database what are the restriction they are regarding parallel collection connections runtime selection of databases um, not quite sure you know what 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 do you mean by that but parallel collection as in if you want to have multiple connections to database from your application absolutely so the idea of connection pool just works fine so you create your connection pool and you can use connection through that mechanism um, runtime selection of database uh, by that I'm guessing you meant you want to um, ch uh, change which database you talk to based on some criteria well, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's in a sense you don't have to do anything spe uh, special so if you let's say got two applications and you have some criteria to switch the URL you can have that logic in your application and it will work just fine I think one thing that I should point out real quick uh, because it, it might it might come up um, when people start talking about having multiple databases in an application or something like that uh, one thing that is handy to know is uh, that we actually also have a cloud namespace when you when you don't want everything to just be automatic and inject a single data source um, you can actually be more explicit using this cloud namespace uh, as you can see um, right here on the screen in a spring 3.1 app we actually have uh, support for profiles so you can have a profile that deploys to the uh, recognizes you're deploying to the cloud and then use the cloud namespace uh, strictly within that profile the next question is from uh, Raminder Singh uh, how security layer works here like using LDAP or OpenDS um, Right now, you will, uh, if you want to do security, and let's say you are using Spring Security, you will have to use uh, database to store your credentials. You could, of course, integrate with OpenID because it's really an external service, so you can talk to it. If you want to run in your own data center, you could uh, develop LDAP as a service, and then it will be just like other service, uh, could also. Can we develop? Uh, an app using RESTful WS. Uh, Mark, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, the uh, you know Spring MVC obviously provides support for building RESTful applications. So um, any Spring MVC application can be deployed into Cloud Foundry. Um, also, on the outbound side, if you're actually thinking of it from the client perspective, you can use Spring's REST template when within your application to call out to other um, web services. So on the outbound side, you do have um, port 80 wide open to use for uh, uh, accessing public web services. So next question is from Stefan. Uh, how long it takes to register to Cloud Foundry Pass? I'm waiting for weeks already. Uh, we understand uh, a few people have been waiting for uh, quite a bit of time. And we are trying. I mean, is it, what uh, we really got overwhelming response. Uh, so what we are we are trying to add more capacity every day, and we are sending out a few uh, invitations every day. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is those who are waiting to really see this experience you can uh, install Cloud Foundry on your laptop. Uh, in really no time it's less than an hour and most of that hour is actually waiting for it to download packages and Linux and other things and you can get the same experience including services running on your cloud and once you understand how it works then it's really a matter of where it hosted and we'll of course you know, clear up uh, all the invitations as we go along but you don't have to wait for seeing this experience um, so that that's why we have this api.cap.me in STS when we created cloud that's where you will target to the next question is what about HTTP session replication through multiple instances my app uh, have a login um, this is from uh, Christopher so this we have currently sticky session support so if your application is using um, sessions to manage uh, logins um, then it will work just fine Session replication is something we have uh, been looking into positive times, 
and we will offer that as um, replication as a service or replication as a feature. Um, Next question, yes, um, it's it's a, it's a clarification about connection pooling, which I already uh, answered. Uh, do we have sticky session if necessary? Yes, and you don't have to do anything. You basically use session in a normal manner, and as soon as we detect uh, you are using a, a session, we will uh, stick it. Uh, we'll make it sticky. Uh, is it possible uh, using threads? Uh, uh, Threads for scheduling, uh, executing async tasks, absolutely. Uh, so, Mark, you probably want to add something about integration here. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, there's, there's. Uh, I think we've mentioned it a few times. There's, there's a big emphasis here on not restricting the use of the API. Um, so, there, there would be some things in terms of uh, writing files and such that are going to be restricted a bit, but when it comes to things like the actual threading model within Java, you're just running an application on Tomcat, essentially. So, we have uh, a few of the samples that you'll see in the Cloud Foundry samples um, repository are using Spring integration, doing a lot of messaging within the application and across applications. All of those build on top of Spring's uh, scheduling support. Um, you can use Spring's uh, task namespace, the async annotation, the scheduled annotation, um, and configure that as you normally would, uh, just relying on standard Java 5 plus um, thread pool implementations. Now, one thing to keep in mind in the cloud is that you might have uh, cases where you want to coordinate the scheduling of something across multiple instances. Um, and that, that's something that we've also been working on is a uh, sort of a distributed scheduler as a service. Um. Uh, so next question is, is there a sample or a blog entry on cloud, for example, using RabbitMQ? So one thing I will point before we get into the answer itself is RabbitMQ is available as a private service. So we have enabled it for certain users, but not all users. If you install your own local cloud, of course, you can then install RabbitMQ, and that will be a service available. So sometimes it's actually better to work local cloud if you want to experiment things. Uh, and it's a community project. It's open source project. So you can even contribute things uh, there. Um, I will point out also on that, uh, we do have this uh, the, the, the widgets and gadgets application, which is modeled after a sample from the Enterprise Integration Patterns book. It is using. Um, AMQP channel adapters and Spring integration. Those in turn build on top of Spring AMQP. If you want to see how it actually works, um, that's a good place to go. And really, there's not much to it. It's just like with the database. Um, there's a connection factory in the Spring AMQP project, and all you need is for that to be uh, injected with the, the values of the service running on Cloud Foundry. The rest of the code is exactly the same and completely portable. So the next question is about uh, documenting how to deploy cloud uh, infrastructure at home. Um, if you want to deploy it in a, in a single virtual machine, there are pretty good detailed instructions, as well as uh, there is a contribution from uh, a community that has one script that you have to run, and you have to answer a couple of questions, basically your password. And you can have it in uh, basically no time. I mean, you start the script, uh, give your password, and go have a coffee, and when you come back, you probably will have cloud ready. Uh, running on multiple uh, machines takes a bit more effort, but uh, and uh, we will definitely raise up questions in support forum, and we will point you to in right direction. Uh, and Ort, of course, will input uh, documentation, make it uh, make it pretty easy. Uh, next question is, what about uh, Ruby on Rails examples? Um, Yes, Ruby on Rails is one of the support platform, and there are applications uh, that you can deploy. Uh, we don't have it in the same Spring Source uh, repository, but uh, come to our forum and we'll put the right uh, URLs. Next question is uh, network ports. Um, is one able to uh, restrict access on ports, some kind of firewall? Your application is running on essentially what would be seen externally as a port 80. I mean, it's running, of course, on a, uh, uh, and some some port, as you saw in Hello ENV example. Uh, 
other ports uh, if you open they are available uh, to other applications local applications they may be available uh, but uh, it's really port 80 is what uh, what matters most and that's uh, already taken care by router um well the other one is just uh, christopher probably like uh, like our answer so thank you <laughs> uh does uh, cloud foundry supply any visual dashboard for monitoring load uh, scaling out to new instance this is question from kim uh we are working on a developer portal uh, that will let you essentially do what you saw it from sts where you could see uh, and more in sts you could see scaling out part by now raising or decreasing number of instances but we'll add more information uh what's your load and so on i think we are uh, just about time uh um if there are more questions uh please uh, come to cloud foundry support forum and uh, ask there and we will be very happy to answer there uh clearly uh you we like you to try platform out um while you are waiting for approval please uh, just try to download uh, uh, cloud itself and uh, cloud uh, code itself and run it on your local uh, machine and please pro provide us feedback all right thank you